And welcome back to Jeff Kanange live here in Citizen Television's Studio One. And I tell you folks, when the best political tag team on TV shows up, you need to pay attention. Dictionary, thesaurus, Wikipedia, everything. Dr. P.L.O. Lumumba, Barack Maluka are in the house and we are breaking things down. Gentlemen, let's start with just the recent election in uh, Ugenya and uh, Bakasi. A shocker, uh, Dr. P.L.O., in your opinion, was it a shocker? Because Deputy President William Ruto is already creating, uh, claiming credit for both. I'm not shocked. First of all, let us agree that these are by-elections. And it was quite, quite clear, let's start with Mbakashi, uh, that the candidate whose election was nullified was the popular candidate. And it's not lost on me that within the very fragile NASA fraternity, uh, one arm of it tried to persuade the other not to fill the candidate. Yeah. But as a clear demonstration of the very disharmonious, if you may, relationship, the other refused to accept. And they were beaten, as one would have expected. So I was not surprised at all. In Ugenya, I was equally not surprised. I heard the leader of the ODM party at one of the funerals saying that he should not be embarrassed and that a vote for one of the candidates would be a vote against him. Mm -hmm. But the electorate came out quite resolute and said, we are liberating ourselves. And this is how I want to see it, that the electorate in that part of the world is sending one and singular message. We are electing our member of parliament and we do not want anybody to tell us who to elect. That is our understanding of democracy. Mm. And that is a good thing. It is a good thing. Yeah. Because it is the beginning, if you may, at the risk of sounding melodramatic, of the liberation of the electorate. Of course, the so-called political heavyweights will now claim many things. Mm. They are those who want to depict it as a battle between Honorable Dinga and Honorable Ruto. I don't think so. I don't think that Honorable Ruto influenced the election of Honorable David Ocheng. The people of Ugenya voted and voted resoundingly and they have sent a clear message to the politicians who hitherto have been taking them for granted that things are beginning to change and that change does provide a breath of fresh air mm, barack what do you think your thoughts well first uh, when the luo nation rises it starts rising from ugenya it did that before and the Luo nation has a, a knack for rebelling against uh, draconian leaders, first from outside and even from inside. When you look at uh, what happened uh, in Ugenya, you can see that David Ocheng in 2017 virtually won this seat. But the election was stolen from him both through propaganda, people brought up all manner of uh, ridiculous things associating him with, among others, things such as the death of uh, Chris Sando. They associated him with the self-same William Ruto and the Jubilee at that time. If his association, so-called, with the Jubilee did not work in 2017, why would they say that it has worked this time round? I think there's a, a very clear message which the youthful people in this country are sending to the dinosaurs in the political terrain. They are telling them that we are tired, we are fed up, we have had enough of your rhetoric, you have danced enough before us, you have said enough things that uh, do not uh, mean anything to us, and going forward we want to ask what it is that you are doing for us. David Ocheng has got an, an, an enviable, he has got an enviable track record. Five years that he has been the MP for Ugenya, he has done more for that constituency than all the other candidates rolled into one, whether it's James Orengo, Matthew Sugutu, Archbishop Stephen Ondiek, and others whose names we don't remember and which names perhaps are not even worth remembering, yeah. rolled into one. 
David Docheng has uh, put up a medical training center, a teacher training college, a polytechnic. He's brought water to the people. He's done so many things that you don't come and tell the electorate that if you vote for him, you are voting against me. And they are telling those uh, the draconian uh, dinosaurs that we will vote against you, Utadu. Mm. A breath of fresh air, no doubt. Uh, Wajir, obviously, look, at the end of the day, uh, Dr. PLO, uh, this is turning out to be a contest between Deputy President William Ruto and former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. Let's say it's a contest between the two, and they are agitating. Which, is, which, which is rather unfortunate in this day and age, because I'm quite certain that in the mind of Deputy President William Ruto, he wants to contest the president. I'm not quite certain that Honorable Odinga wants to contest again. Mm -hmm. But there is a sense in which those in his corner are urging him on. And there is a sense in which every event that is now taking place is being choreographed yeah. to appear as if it is that contest. And I've just seen what is happening in Wajia. There is the one sector of the political divide that is claiming yeah. that it was negotiated between uh, Honorable Dinga, President Kenyatta, and uh, Honorable Raphael Tuju. Yes. Then there is another segment of it that is saying it was Honorable Ruto who midwived this process through the clan elders. Whatever the case may be, one must ask the foundational question, how does it address the issue of democracy? Because what annoys one, particularly one if one allows oneself to think, the assumption that the electorate has nothing to do with this, that this is a contest between political heavyweights mm. and that the electorate are merely pawns in a political chessboard. Yeah. This is what I find, I find irritating and annoying at once. And, and, and it annoys me when I see politicians who are fairly seasoned coming out in press conferences telling us the electorate does not matter. It is our boardroom negotiations that matter. It is an insult to democracy. It is an insult to the electorate. And it's something that ought to be condemned in the strongest term. But to come to your question, it is true. The media, whether it is electronic or print in this country, has built a story and every other happening in the political arena in this country is now being choreographed as an epic battle between Honorable Raila Odinga and Honorable William Samway Ruto. Yeah. It's sad. It's sad indeed because Barack, it makes the president a lame duck. Let's face it, the big four agenda, it's out the window. Nobody's talking about that right now. Well, the president allows himself also to start becoming to look like a, a lame duck. Mm. He has got uh, certain powers that uh, he needs to exercise. If you followed the interview last evening on the question of uh, corruption, and if you followed the state of uh, the nation address the other time where he was equivocating, prevaricating, double speaking, you can see that uh, you have got a president here who is pushing himself into a latch. You have got a president who has decided that he's going to be the principal whistleblower in his own government. We have got a president who has decided that he's the leader of opposition in his own political party. Mm. And you can see that uh, his members of parliament are standing up to him instead of standing up for him that if you looked at what happened in Parliament the other day, that uh, his speech was being celebrated by the ODM people in the National Assembly and in the Senate. Yeah. And so if this president does not watch out, he risks uh, becoming a later day Ethelred the Unready. Ethelred the Unready was uh, a king of England, one of the weaker ones. Uh, towards the end of the 10th century and into the 11th century, he was uh, an ill-advised individual who did not know how to exercise power 
partly because he got into power when he was uh, uh, fairly uh, young, almost uh, juvenile, and he did not know wh how power was exercised. And you have a, a president who cannot even dismiss errant members of his cabinet. He has to keep on looking behind his shoulder to wonder whether if he made a move, it would be the right move. And if he made a move, his government would survive. And I can tell him for free, I can look in that camera and tell him, Mr. President, carry on like this. Come next year, you will be totally irrelevant on the national political landscape. Your own troops within Jubilee are going to be agglutinating around the deputy president because he starts representing the future <coughs> that they start seeing power assembling around. So Kenyans have voted for you. Work for them. And, and, and Jeff, just, just before we lose be, that be, Before you say that, yes. what was that guy's name? Ethelred the what? Ethelred the Unready. The Unready. When do you guys have time to read all the... Oh no, 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 you know, wh one of the things, somebody, I met somebody from Malawi last evening, mm. and he's been here for two days, and he asked me, when are your elections? <laughs> I told him in 2022. He said, but you are behaving <laughs> as if you have elections next week. Tomorrow. And I said, he that said this. is our undoing. Yeah. And the tragedy of this is, and you've rightly alluded to it, we used to talk with enthusiasm about Vision 2030. Mm. We used to talk with enthusiasm about the big four. Yeah. We used to talk with enthusiasm about health and all these other things. Today, all those are being relegated to the back burner. And, and Barack has said something that is very interesting as regards the president. He is leaving, so there is a sense in which he ought to be focusing on his legacy. Yeah. I was a little surprised today, not that Honorable <laughs> Uraila Odinga ought not to say this, but the newspapers screaming, Kenya will change, change this year. It yeah. is the president who ought to be saying yeah. that. Yeah. And, and, and it is critical that he seizes this opportunity and takes the steering wheel so that we remember him for the big four and reduces the temperature as it is now. The politicians across the numerous political divides are daggers drawn. Mm -hmm. The issues that ought to be the issues of focus in this country are not receiving the focus that they deserve. And the country is overheating with politics which is ethnicized, which is sectarian, the country is possibly moving into a referendum and you're one of the few countries in the world that talks about the inevitability of a referendum without asking what the referendum questions are going to yeah, be. Correct, correct. And so the night of the long knives, Barack, is that coming? Or on the other hand, you look at the moment corruption is mentioned, people revert to their ethnic cocoons. Mtu wetu, mtu wetu, this, that. And that is dangerous. You, you, you see, we as a, a country, Jeff and uh, PLO, we need to ask ourselves a few questions about this notion of our person, mtu wetu. Mm. Don't we need to look at uh, mtu wetu through fresh paradigms? Don't we need a, a paradigm shift? We're talking about a country that has got uh, about 8.5 million able-bodied, mature citizens within employable brackets who do not have a regular job, a regular income. What does it matter? What should it matter to that kind of uh, individual, that kind of population of 8.5 million, whether the thief is from their tribe, whether the president is from their tribe, should they not be thinking about uh, what can make positive change in their lives? Don't they need to ask themselves about uh, our person who is articulating things in a manner that reflects that uh, we are bonded in common hopes, in common aspirations, in common fears, and that uh, through this bond, 
we can start redefining ourselves, redefining one another. And when we see a thief, we deal with that thief the way a thief should be dealt with. But we have seen that uh, we are a nation of uh, sheeple. You know, there was a, a British uh, journalist who, towards the end of the Second World War, coined the expression of sheeple. When people behave like sheep, when they can be railroaded mm. and be told that uh, as a tribe we are going this way, when you have narratives and conversations such as we have in this country where people say that uh, when leader A says we shall go this way, he's coming with a, a solid block of so many tribal voters, then those people have stopped being people. They have become sheeple. Hmm. And Indeed. we are a nation of sheeple. A nation of sheeple that does not question these fellows who are at the top and who are stealing and who will come to you and tell you that we are being persecuted and you actually believe there's no difference between you and the sheep that you keep at home. And some of these sheep we have even established, people sleep with them under the same roof. In more ways than one. Yes. No, don't talk more about the second one, way. But let's not talk about the second <laughs> way. <laughs> You <laughs> you were saying I was saying yes. just just to amplify what Barack yes. has talked about that one of the greatest tragedies in this country is the content with which the Kenyan politician holds the Kenyan electorate. Yeah. It is assumed uh, that he or she is an incompoop mm -hmm. who does not think. It is assumed that he or she knows not what he or she wants. It is assumed that he or she no longer thinks. It is assumed that decisions are made on his or her behalf. And Kenya is, if you visit other countries, one of the better African countries. One of the better African countries. But remember, I'm comparing dwarfs. Yeah. So he's just slightly taller than the other dwarfs but slightly better yeah. and we are in danger of squandering the opportunities that we have as a nation of focusing on the real issues that can make this country to be a great country mm -hmm. and we are sacrificing our future as a nation at the altar of short-term political interest look at the thing that we call the handshake mm -hmm. and i have no quarrel with pol political rapprochement it is the way to go but because of selective amnesia, we forget that since the year 1992, we have always had handshakes. We had a handshake called cooperation in 1994. Yeah. We had another handshake after 2007. We have another handshake in 2017. And I fear that we'll have yet another handshake in the year 2023. But because we suffer selective amnesia, we always operate as if these things were new. And our tragedy once again, and I'm overusing this word tragedy because it is appropriate this evening, is that the political players remain the same. If you look at the players, those who are involved in the handshakes from 1992, and I've said this before, much to the anger of my audience, and I'll repeat it, the forest changed, the forest meaning the political parties changed, but the monkeys and their habits remain the same. To this day? To this day. Just look, cast your eye. Yes. The parties may have changed, they come in different forms and formations, but the individuals remain the same and therefore the ideas remain the same. Yeah. What we thought was a lake has now become a pond because <laughs> there is no new inflows. <laughs> On that note, we're going to take a quick break. Come back, gentlemen. That is so true. You just nailed it, by the way. You just nailed it. And when we're looking at 2022, there's no new faces anyway. Absolutely. There are no new faces. Barack, at ANC, there's no new faces. Well, uh, there's a new face, but we'll come no, to that. No, there's a new face. We will come to that. <laughs> in the meantime, in the Champions League, Barcelona are one up against Manchester United. I've just been informed by Monica, <laughs> if you're interested.
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, enjoy, I enjoy watching all of them, but uh, I support all of them. Okay. <laughs> One nil so far. How many minutes in, Monica? 30 minutes. Oh, okay. 20 minutes. Thir 33 minutes in. Perfect. Okay, first half. 1 nil Barcelona. We're going to take a quick break, come back, and talk exactly <laughs> what these gentlemen are talking about. The forest has changed, monkeys remain the same. The same. <laughs> <laughs> Do the math. Keep tweeting. We're going to go to your tweets as well. At Kunanga Jeff, at Susan TV King, the hashtag is JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> <laughs>